Good morning, good morning. That's right. Everybody, let's get on your feet. Merry Christmas week. We're just going to do a little bit of singing together this morning. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him a room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reign. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy.
Okay, so everybody knows this song, and I want you guys all to sing out with me. We're gonna, we're just gonna worship for a second, and and remember why we celebrate this season. It's for the birth of Jesus Christ, for the gift that God gave us of His Son. sing this one out. Heavenly Father, we are so gracious and humbled 
to be here, to be able to celebrate your birthday, the king of our nation, of this world, of this universe. We play these simple songs to remind us of a simpler time, a time where you laid in the manger, luxuries you didn't have that we have today thanks to the goodness and grace that you provided all of us. With your birth also ultimately came your death, with came our life. And it's through all of that that this is all possible. And Lord, it's a blessing to be able to come to minister and to give you all the grace and the glory that you deserve and that we're unworthy for. But we know that we're worthy through you. Lord, I ask that there's someone in this room today, someone maybe here for the first time today, or anywhere, or someone who has a need on their heart, Lord, that they lay it all at the feet of the cross today. They lay it all on the line, and they use this as an opportunity to bring the joy into their hearts that you brought into mine, and I'd like to share that with the world. Lord, again, we thank you for the birth, the death, and the resurrection, because they're all connected. And we look forward to the message that we're going to hear and receive, open our hearts and minds, and we give you all the grace and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. You can have a seat. It's good to see everyone out. Merry Christmas to everybody. We want to take time for our offering. Uh, we do this each week. We, this is a very important part of our worship to God. Uh, we make it easy for you. We, through several means, we have boxes on the wall in the foyer, one up here by this exit. You can use those uh, for cash or checks to go in there. You can text the word GIVE to 833-236-7336 or use your browser for edcc.us slash give. And you know, giving is for each one of us. Every one of us have the opportunity to give to God. We may consider that we're not perhaps important enough or we don't have enough or, you know, it would be embarrassing for the, <coughs> excuse me, embarrassing for the amount that I, I would be able to give, but giving is for everyone. Each one of us give to God. Let, let's read from Matthew chapter 10 and verse 42. It says, And anyone who gives one of my most humble followers a cup of cool water, just because that person is my follower, will be rewarded. Everything that we do, we give to God. And I hope that we all will take opportunity this morning to give back to him, to give from our financial uh, wellness to be able to give to him no matter what the gift is. Don't worry about, just like we've been uh, talking about the supporting cast, every gift, every single gift is important, and God welcomes us to do that. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for sending Jesus to this earth and for his life, his, his death, and the resurrection. Uh, we just rejoice over his being sent to this world and just think of the uh, enormity of that, the, the blessing that you gave us by him coming down and being just like we are, taking on the form that's, that we have so that he might suffer, so that he could show us just how much that he loves us. And then rise again to be alive forever, the promise that we have to be with him, to be with you one day. Help us, Father, to give out of generosity. We love you and praise your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Give it up for David today. Well, good morning, everybody. How are you today? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It's my, my bad.
Yeah. You know, I try my best to mess them up every week. <laughs> you know, just want to keep them on their toes. You know, that's what... Would you turn these lights on out there so I can see that? You know, that's what James Brown... Anybody know who James Brown was? You know, that's what he used to do. You know, he would do stuff right in the middle of his set, you know, and if they didn't catch it, you know, he would uh, he, he'd find them or something like that. Well, I try to keep them on their toes, and I certainly did this morning. But, hey, it is so good to have each one of you here. God bless you. want to make you welcome, especially those of you that are watching online today. Thank you for allowing us to come into your home. It is a blessing that you do that every single week, and I want to ask all of you. Now, listen, this is the last service here this year, and I want to ask you to do this. Say, I will. You don't even know what I ask. <laughs> All right, I want to ask every single one of you, if you have a social media page, that you will share this service on your social media page sometime today. You know, you never know who you're going to reach. And, and by you sharing, every time somebody shares, it goes up exponentially. And the very person that you reach might be the one that needs something that's said or sung today. So, so do that. Uh, it would greatly be appreciated. Thank you so much. And I do want to give you uh, some information about just a few things. First of all, our Christmas outreach this year is uh, to the homeless with socks and gloves. And I mean, we've got tons, hundreds of socks, hundreds of gloves, and we need thank you for for your generosity. We need to put that all together today right after service, and then we're going to deliver them to the homeless. Um, but if you can stick around for a few minutes, we will be serving lunch, and many hands make light work. So if there's a lot of people here, it'll just take a few minutes, but if there's only two or three of us, it might take us a couple of hours. So if you can just Take a few minutes out of your schedule today. Stick around. We'll give you lunch. Uh, we'll be down here sorting these things out and putting a little gift in there and just, uh, just letting them know how much we appreciate them. Thank you so much for that. And T-shirts. Say T-shirts. T-shirts are in today. Wow, look at that T-shirt. I love it, love it, love it. It says, for I know, not I think so, not I wish, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Now, we have a T-shirt for every single person. If you signed up, that T-shirt is over there. Your name is on there if you will check that off. If for some reason you didn't order a T-shirt, we do have a lot of extra shirts, but they are in a separate pile. Uh, you know, as far as they'll go, uh, we'll give those out, but there will be somebody over there to help you with that today. But thank you so much for that. And I would like to ask for every person to wear their T-shirt, their Edge T-shirt, on January the 9th. So if you'll wear that T-shirt on January the 9th, I really would appreciate it. Also, I want to let you know there will not be a service here or at Renovation Church next Sunday. No service, no live service. Pastor Jeremy and I, we did a video. It's going to be broadcast on their website and on our social media pages, our website and our YouTube page. Uh, it's going to be a really great blessing. There's a time of praise and worship, and we've got some good things that we're going to be sharing. But no service in here. If you come here next week, uh, you will be the only ones. You will be by yourself. And then, uh, but if you want to go to a Christmas Eve service, renovation in Simpsonville, is having two opportunities, two Christmas Eve services, one at 3.30 and one at 5 o'clock. So if you can go to those, I know it would be a great blessing to you. Are you ready this morning? Yes. Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas! Hey, it's hard to believe, you know, Christmas is just a few days away. And this Christmas, today, really, I mean, this is the very last Christmas service that Robin and I are going to serve here as the edge and lead pastors. And, you know, when we first started telling our leadership in July and then, then made it public in, uh, in August that we were retiring and merging with renovation, I knew two things were going to happen. 
First of all, I knew that it was going to be here before I knew it. And I mean, just like that, here it is. You know, January the 9th is just right around the corner. And, and I do want to invite every single one of you to be here that day, especially those of you that have been watching online. Would you come and be in a live service that day, January the 9th? It really would mean a lot to Robin and I to be able to see you. And not that we're never going to see you again, but, but our last day as lead pastors as we uh, pass the baton, uh, off to Joe and to Matt and to Renovation Church. So I promise you it will be a great celebration. So I knew that was going to happen. Knew it was going to be real quick, but I also knew something else. I knew that when we made that public announcement, Robin and I were going to be treading water for a long time. By that, you know, we couldn't move forward. We really couldn't go back. And so for the last six months, you know, we've just kind of been hanging on, just sort of waiting, waiting, waiting. But I want to thank every single one of you that have stayed with us, that have supported us, and and you know, it has just been a blessing uh, that you stayed with us through this, and we look forward to a great future together. We love you. But today is not about us. I mean, this is our last service before Christmas, and I believe that I have a timely message for you today. And I want to ask you to think about something for a minute. I mean, what is so special about Christmas anyway? I mean, why is it the most celebrated holiday, not just in America, but I mean, on the planet? I mean, why is that? You know, why is it this week that people all around the world, they shut down their businesses, they attend a church service, they maybe have a party, gather with their family and friends to celebrate? What makes Christmas so extraordinary? Well, you know, the simple answer is it's the birth of Jesus, silly. Well, I mean, that's right, but sometimes I think the real significance of these events get lost among everything else. So today, it's my prayer that when you leave, you might look at Christmas maybe a little bit differently than you've ever looked at it before, and maybe you'll always look at it differently, never look at it the same way again. You know, we've been teaching this series called The Supporting Cast of Christmas, and what we've been doing is looking at different characters in the Christmas narrative that don't usually get a lot of attention. You know, first we, we looked at Joseph. We called him the forgotten hero. And the bottom line was, even though you think nobody notices what you do, listen, what you do always matters. It really matters. So never give up doing the right thing. Last week we looked at Simeon. We looked at Anna. We called them heroes of hope. And the bottom line was to never allow circumstances or time to hinder you from believing God's promises. I mean, always keep your hope alive because God is faithful. He is true. Now, today I want to look at the shepherds. And I'm calling them heroes of peace. And I like that word hero, I guess you can tell. And I think it, it, it aptly describes the people that we're, we're talking about in this series. I mean, the diction, dictionary defines hero as someone who is selfless, one who is admired for brave or courageous acts or fine qualities. And I think that, that describes Joseph and Anna and Simeon and the shepherds. You know, nowadays, though, when we think about heroes, you know, we usually associate that with some kind of tragedy or, or violence. You know, they're saving the world from terrorists or they're, they're thwarting an, uh, an international plot or they're trying to stop an alien invasion, you know, and, and they may wear some kind of of uniform, like the police or firemen or military personnel or doctors or nurses. But then, you know, we have taken heroes to a whole different level. I mean, we've got superheroes, and they wear these colorful costumes. You know, and I never understood, you know, how they think that nobody knows who they are with that little bitty, little bitty mask on, but they wear masks, you know, and they have special abilities. And how many of you have ever dreamed about being a superhero with special abilities? You know, wouldn't that be cool to have mind control or be able to walk through walls or you could be invisible or, or have supernatural strength or something like that? But, you know, I think everybody dreams about having some kind of superpower. You know, those are superheroes. But then they're just ordinary heroes. I mean, they might not have any special abilities, but may not wear a uniform. But I think they fit the criteria of the definition of a hero. Moms, dads, teachers, children's workers, 
I think about the production team back there. They are superheroes. I think about pastors' wives. You know, they don't get a lot of recognition sometimes, but they certainly are superheroes. And, you know, just ordinary people who rise to the occasion and end up doing extraordinary things. Well, that's the kind of heroes these shepherds were. Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 8. This is out of the Living Bible. It says, That night some shepherds were in the field outside the village, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel appeared among them, and the landscape shone bright with the glory of the Lord. And they were badly frightened, but the angel assured them, Don't be afraid. Say, Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, afraid, he said. I bring you the most joyful news ever announced. And it is for everyone. I mean, what an incredible experience that must have been. You know, we can use all kinds of adjectives to describe it. Supernatural, amazing, incredible, frightening. You know, it certainly must have been a frightening spectacle because the very first thing the angel said was, don't be afraid. And you know, even today with the volumes of teaching we have about God's mercy and His goodness and His grace, there are still a lot of people You may be like this today. A lot of people that that have an an unhealthy fear of God. You know, when they think about God or even going to church, it conjures up all kinds of images of of preachers maybe yelling at them, you know, fire and brimstone and wrath and hell and finger pointing and anger and judgment. I mean, I have seen preachers get so wound up, I thought they were going to have a stroke. I mean, I remember one guy, this actually happened. Of course, he was led by the Spirit. But he was pounding the pulpit so hard that he broke a bone in his hand. Yeah. I think that's why a lot of people have stayed away from church. Or they only go to church, you know, a couple times a year. It's not because they don't believe in God. Not because they don't have a desire to worship Him. But just their memories about church are not good ones. You know, they think if I go to church, I'm going to get scolded. I'm going to get reminded about all the bad things I've done or all the good things that I haven't done. You know, people are going to point out to me how angry God is at my sins and my inadequacies, and and, and they're going to make me feel guilty, and then they're going to ask me for money. I mean, it's bad enough that they make me feel guilty, but then they want me to pay them to do that. You know, perhaps that's how the shepherds felt. Who knows? That might have been the reason, the very first thing the angel said was don't be afraid. You know, maybe you've never heard this before. If you haven't, I'm glad you're here. If you've heard it before, this will do you good. But, you know, Jesus did not come to earth. Listen, listen, listen. Jesus did not come to earth to condemn you or whip you or scold you. He came to pardon you. And to point you to God through faith in Him. And He didn't come so that you would want to run away and hide from Him. He came so that you would want to run to Him. And Jesus did not come to remind us about how bad we are. Jesus came to show us how good we can be through Him. And so the angel said, don't be afraid. You know, as human beings, I mean, we have all kinds of fears. Might be a fear of failure, might be the fear of success, fear of being embarrassed, fear of criticism, fear of poverty, fear of old age, fear of the unknown, fear of death, fear of a thousand things. And all these fears, they come from the thought of being exposed. You know, I can't do this, or or I didn't meet those standards, or I did something wrong, or I wasn't strong enough, or or I was so unworthy, and I don't want to be found out. I don't want anybody to know about me. I don't want to be exposed for what I did, or what I didn't do, or what I can't do. And so I'm I'm fearful, but the angel said, hey, don't be afraid. I mean, I'm bringing you tonight the most joyful news ever announced. You know, that kind of sets up something else about Christmas. You know, Christmas is supposed to be a time of joy and celebration. I realize over the last couple of years, you know, because of the pandemic and, you know, different things, inflation and racial tensions and whatever. I mean, a lot of celebrations have been put on hold, but there's still a lot of celebrations going on. And I believe more are going to happen this year than's happened in a couple of years. You know, family get-togethers and and parties and religious services. And honestly, you know, we had our our staff party uh, last week. And honestly, I'm going to be transparent with you. I kind of have a love-hate relationship 
with Christmas parties and all parties in general. And, and, and something you may not know about me, I am an introvert. I really am. I am an introvert. I'm a homebody. Uh, the most favorite thing in my life to be at home with Robin and not be anywhere else. And, and so I have to make myself go to parties. Now, once I get there, I always have a great time, you know, and it's fun. But, but just the initial push to get there is hard. But over the years, I have forced myself, changed my thinking. Why? Because God loves celebrations. I mean, he's really into it. In fact, the Bible says there's a celebration in heaven every single time a person puts their trust in Christ as Savior. You know, I asked some people one time, I said, uh, what are you going to be celebrating for Christmas this year? One person said, well, not a lot this year. I mean, the bad economy, put a damper on everything. The fact that we've just survived another year. One person said being home, not being on the road this year, being with family. One guy said nothing. He said, I just want things to get back to normal. You know, and I think a lot of people kind of kind of feel that way about Christmas. You know, it's it's just hard to celebrate anything. You know, if we can just get through it. In-laws, exes drama, tension, pressure, bills, stress, expectations, disappointments, more expectations, more disappointments. I just want to be able to get through Christmas without having a meltdown. But you know, when we have those thoughts, that's a sure sign that we're not looking at Christmas the right way. You know, we've lost sight of what the moment is all about. The angel said, I bring you the most joyful news ever announced. And listen, it's for everyone. That means it's for you. It's for me. And, and, and what was the most joyful news ever? Well, the Savior's born. Christ the Lord. John 3.16 says, this is out of the Living Bible. It says, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. That is the most joyful news ever that God loves you, he loved me, he loved the world so much that he gave Jesus. And if we will just believe and trust in him, we can have real life with God forever. Human beings, they had never known that before. But that night, I mean, everything changed. What a wonderful gift. Back to Luke chapter 2. Angel said, don't be afraid. I bring you the most joyful news ever announced, and it is for everyone, the Savior. Yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born in Bethlehem. You know, God never does anything unless it needs to be done. And so the fact that he sent a Savior to earth means we needed to be saved. But you know, doesn't that bring up a question? I mean, what do we need to be saved from? Well, the name Jesus means save or save his people. He will save his people from their sins. But that brings up another question. What in the world is sin? You know, when you say sin, everybody's got their own ideas. Some people think sin is a list of errors. You know, one person... Per per one person's got a list, and they're on their list, drinking and smoking and cussing and chewing and lying and stealing. And somebody else, they may have a list that's different. But a lot of people have lists. You've got your list. I got my list. But you know, according to the Bible, that's not it at all. Sin is not a list of violations. It's a position it's a stance. It's not something you do. It is a manifestation of who you are. I want to be my own boss. God, you do your thing. I'll do my thing. Sin is, God, I, I know more about my life than you do. I know what will make me happy. Don't interfere. And the Bible says that every single one of us have taken that position at some point in our life. And because we took that position, it separated us from God. I asked a group of people one time, I said, what do you need to be saved from? Got all kind of answers. One guy said, uh, I need to be saved from spending too much money. 
The lady said, I need to be saved from my wrinkles. More than one said, I need to be saved from overeating at Christmas time. One guy said, I need to be saved for myself. You know, I can really relate to that last guy. Because there are things about me that I don't like. I'd like to change. Anybody ever struggle with change? You know, you see these things in yourself. You know, you look in the mirror or maybe, you know, you're, you're getting ready to take a shower. And I don't know, but you talk to yourself in the shower. I talk to myself all the time. I have conversations and I answer back. That's the problem, you know. <laughs> You know, and I'm, I'm talking about this, and I'm having all these conversations about how I need to do this, and need to do that, and I need to change, but I just struggle with this stuff. Well, we're not alone. If you're like me, you're not alone. Romans chapter 7, verse 15. This is Paul writing. He says, what I don't understand about myself is that I decide one way but then I act another. You ever done that? Yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Yep, 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 yep. Nope. <laughs> Doing things I absolutely despise. I'm not going to eat those donuts this year. I don't care how many of them come in the office. I'm not going to eat one. Yeah, these are good. You know, it doesn't have to be donuts. It can be anything. You know, in just a few days, we're going to be making some New Year's resolutions. But you know, I dare say by the end of January, many of those resolutions are going to be in the trash can. Why? Because it's difficult. It's difficult to change even small things. Paul goes on. Chapter 7, verse 18, he says, I realize that I don't have what it takes. I can will it. But I can't do it. I decide to do good, but I don't really do it. I decide not to do bad, but I do it anyway. Verse 24, I've tried everything. Been to every prayer conference, got in every prayer line, called every prayer chain. I've tried everything and nothing helps. I'm at the end of my rope. Is there no one who can do anything for me? Isn't that the real question? I mean, isn't there some help out there somewhere? The answer, thank God, is that Jesus Christ can and does. See, Paul said he needed help. You ever been like that? I have. You know, if we're honest about it, sometimes we feel like you know, our life is out of control. In fact, that's a pretty common feeling. You know, it's just part of being human. You know, when we're out of control, we look for something to help us, but sometimes we look in the wrong places. You know, if I could just get married, or if I could just get out of a marriage, or if I could just get a job, or get another job, or get a promotion, Attain a certain level of wealth. Have a baby. If my babies would grow up and graduate. Drive a certain car. Live in a certain house. If I could just be famous. Have a million followers. You know, but that's why we get frustrated. We're looking in the wrong places. Some people, they're looking for fulfillment and, and salvation and self-help books and fads and new diets and some kind of vacation. If I could just go to Hawaii, if I could just go to Tahiti, then everything would be great. But you know, the answer is not in a place or a program or a pill. The answer to our dissatisfaction in life is in a person. Jesus Christ, and he came to save us from our sin. But you know, Jesus didn't just come to save us from something. He saved us for something, for a purpose. You know, people live life, and this is kind of a common thing, people live life on one of three levels, the survival level, the success level, or the significance level. You know, most of the world lives on the survival level. You know, half the world's population, over 4 billion people, they live on just a few dollars a day. That's, that's survival. They just try to eke out enough to 
to make it till tomorrow. You know, if we live in America, you know, we're on the success level. I mean, by that I mean the poorest in America. We're rich compared to so many in the rest of the world. We're truly blessed to live in this country. But, you know, if we're so successful, if we're so blessed, why is it that we're so unfulfilled? It's because we were created for more than just success. Created for something greater. We were created for significance. And significance is to know God and to know His purpose for your life and then do it. You know, we know God's purpose. When you understand, this is what I was made for. This is why I was put on this planet. All the success in the world can never give you that. Back to Luke chapter 2. It says that once the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace. All men and women on earth. You know, if I were to ask you, where do we need peace? You know, everybody's got an answer. Well, you know, we need peace in broken homes. I'd love to see politicians have peace. You know, I'd like to have peace with each other, peace in our heart. I'd like to see peace in home. I'd like to see peace in my life. I'd like to have peace in our country. Everywhere. You know, we all want peace, but but there'll never be world peace. There'll never be peace in our lives until we invite the Prince of Peace to reign in our hearts. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 says this. So now since we have, made, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith in his promises, watch this, we can have real peace with him because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Have you made peace with God? I'm not talking about joining a church somewhere, shaking somebody's hand. I'm talking about making peace with God by asking Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. I mean, submitting your life to him 100%. Allowing him to guide your every single step. And you don't do that by promising to be good or being perfect or never sinning. I mean, none of us can do that. We've all blown it. We blow it all the time. But we make peace with God by having faith in his promises. You know, and nobody here this morning is here by accident. I mean, God knew you before you were born. He knew you were going to be in this Christmas service. In fact, before, before he ever created the universe, he already knew he was going to create you. And before you were ever born, he knew that on December the 19th, 2021, at the edge... You would be sitting right here. And listen, 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 listen. He's got a plan for your life. And that plan is to have fellowship with him through Jesus. So can you say this morning, I'm right with God? Or would you be willing to change your thinking and ask Jesus to forgive you to come into your life and be your Lord. And listen, maybe you need to be at peace with someone else. You know, maybe there's someone that you've been holding a grudge against or, you know, they did you wrong. And, you know, Brad, it's just, I, I just can't, I can't, I, I, I just I just can't seem to break that thing. I can't seem to have peace. Why not this morning, this Christmas service morning, you made the decision. I'm going to let all that stuff go. And I'm going to let the Prince of Peace rule in my heart. You know, what I want to do right now is I'm going to ask Matt to come and kind of close out this portion of the service. And we've got one more song for you. And this is going to give me and the man time to, to get up here and prepare ourselves. But listen to what Matt has to say. I felt led to read a portion of Psalm 51, actually. Um, David writes this. He says, For I was born a sinner. Yes, from the moment my mother conceived me, but you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even now. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. 
Oh, give me back my joy again, for you have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Do not keep looking at my sins, but remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a loyal spirit within me, and do not banish me from your presence, and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels, and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O oh God, who saves. Then I will joyfully sing your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O oh Lord, that my mouth may praise you. You do not desire a sacrifice, or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice that you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O oh God. What that tells us is that the grace of God is inexhaustible. That there's never a point in our life where we have gone too far to be forgiven by God. But what God desires is not sacrifice. What God desires is a, re is a repentant heart. And so we, we pray with me this morning. Holy Spirit, examine our hearts and our minds. Lord, all of us in this room, we, we, we know there's areas of our lives where we need peace, where we need your presence. And we know that the peace of God begins with peace with God. Lord, that it doesn't matter where we grew up. It doesn't matter what we've done. Lord, that your word said is, says that if we confess our sins, that you are faithful to forgive us. Lord, that when we acknowledge and we confess that Jesus is Lord, you, we make you Lord and Savior of our life, that you, you make us white as snow, that you cleanse us, that you forgive us of our sins, that there is no sin that you are unwilling to forgive or unwilling to, to make right. And Lord, I pray that if we are following you, that we would be bearers of peace, that we would be peacemakers, whether it's in a relationship, whether it's in family, whether it's a coworker, whether it's peace, even trusting that you do forgive, Lord. The time and time again, we continue to go back into bad patterns and bad behaviors and, and bad habits, being will, unwilling to listen and obey your word. Lord, as you have forgiven us, Lord, I pray that we would forgive ourselves. And if there's anyone here that has never put their trust and their hope in the Savior of the world, that the God of the universe who stepped out of heaven to come and to be born in a manger, to show us how to live, to, to live a servant's life, and to ultimately give up his life on the cross to forgive us of our sins. I pray that if, if you have not made that decision, the most important decision of your life, that you would not leave here today without talking to someone. That you would say, I, I'm in need of the peace of God. That all around me is chaos and confusion. But today on this day, I, I want to I wanna pray and I want to make Jesus Lord of my life. So Father, we just ask that you would, you would guide us, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would lead us to bring reconciliation into Areas of our life with chaos that need the peace of God. So, Father, we, we thank you for this opportunity to worship and to celebrate the fact that you came and you lived and you died, but you rose again. So, King Jesus, we honor you, we worship you, and it's in your mighty and holy name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.
And they did awesome, didn't they? Well, God bless you. Thank you so much, Matt, for your ministry. We love you and appreciate you. We hope you have the greatest Christmas ever. Don't forget, any of you that can stick around and help uh, load these socks and gloves together, we would really appreciate it. Robin does have lunch for everybody that will stick around. Shake hands with about nine or ten people and uh, tell them you love them. Tell them Merry Christmas. No service next week, but we'll see you on January the 2nd. God bless you.